Welcome everyone, Chris Petrie here. Thanks for coming by. We're having a real fun time here. We're going to be painting some beautiful white flower shapes, um, white narcissus, and we're going to actually start out with a really, uh, we're going to go through all the steps of what it will take to get this composition done. So basically in the beginning, we're just going to start out with a really light pencil sketch uh, with our, just an office pencil. Then after that, we're going to go over with a darker contour drawing, and that's optional. If you want to go over with a darker contour drawing, I use a softer lead um, pencil that gives us a little darker line. I mostly do that because I like seeing pencil lines in my paintings, and also it's good because you can kind of see the darker lines and see the um, shapes of the flowers better as I'm drawing. So that's a dual purpose thing that works out good for all of us. And then um, you can always lighten up too if you do a darker pencil sketch. It never hurts. You can take a a uh, kneaded eraser and just er you know erase off a little bit of pencil lines if you like to to soften it up a little bit and um, and then we'll get into the paints we'll show you all the colors we're going to mix it's not a lot of colors so this is actually a fun painting and composition we're not going to get involved with using all the colors of the palette realistically we're just going to use purple cerulean blue raw sienna for the most part that's really one of our the main color selections we have and then we use a little bit of some burnt sienna and uh, french ultramarine blue and raw umber and then just a tiny bit of some uh, maybe some orange and uh, some red for the uh, center of these flowers here so not a lot of colors pretty simple color scheme here and uh, let's get started okay we'll be right back Okay, so we're going to just get started here. Um, we saw the finished painting, so you kind of see how we're just going to develop some simple flower shapes and uh, in watercolor medium, of course. Um, a lot of times I know that um, in watercolor people ask, like, how do you get um, uh, the uh, nice and light washes as well as darker washes and um, the kind of blending of the two, darker and lighter washes within um, different subject matter, like maybe especially still life. So here we're going to kind of take the idea that um, we just have some normal, uh, like uh, maybe let's say soft lighting inside of a room, and maybe we have a, um, a vase of flowers, some white narcissus, and we're just going to take a couple petals of that um, uh, scene or that subject matter. So we're not going to paint the whole vase and everything like that. Let's just kind of key in on a few um, petals uh, and flower, you know, flower shapes, and kind of see how we go about maybe creating some fun, interesting uh, washes and tonal values and colors uh, in this type of a painting. So you can always imagine that if you practice a smaller section of a painting first and you kind of get a feel for the colors maybe and the um, tonal values, like the lights and the darks of the um, composition in the, in the uh, photograph, if you're working from a photograph or another person's art book or uh, some photos you found online, so on and so forth. Uh, you can always um, try a couple of small spots in a painting first. And then once you do that, then you might find that actually, um, if you go to do the larger painting, let's say you want to do the whole vase and the flowers and maybe a few other items like still life items, like some fruit or a coffee cup or teacup, things like that. If you've already tried a small section of a painting uh, or a still life setup, then you'll, you'll be a little, it'll be a little easier to do the whole scene, you know, so you kind of do it in parts first. And then once you do a few parts of it, then you get the feel for it. And then you can start creating a larger painting with more items in it. And you'll already have the feel for the colors and the light and uh, so forth. So we'll kind of take that approach here that let's pretend we're just going to take a small portion of a painting, a couple of flower shapes and maybe some leaf forms and then just develop it from there. And then down the line, maybe we'll do a larger painting just like uh, using these same flower shapes that we're going to use now. So I'll start out with a preliminary sketch, which is basically a super light sketch. And I just use a regular office pencil like this. And um, I just maybe, the first thing I'll do is say, where do I want to place the flowers in this painting? So um, this might be a, a type of painting where you have a square style paper. So my paper is actually a square shape here. And that's totally fine. You can get a square frame. And then you can even decal the edges of your watercolor paper. They make decaling um, tools that you can buy. I have a couple of those myself. I do a lot of framing on my own for my own paintings, for gallery showings and, and so forth, and uh, for gifts. And, of course, when people buy paintings, if they want it framed, I can do that. And I usually sometimes will frame it for people. 
customers. So, um, you know, they do have those deckling um, tools that you can buy, those acrylic ones. They're kind of clear. Uh, I can't think of the name of them offhand right now, but they work great. You can get all different types of deckling, really thick deckling or very fine deckling edges, deckled edges around the painting. So you can kind of give it a, a deckled edge around and then just put it on top of a piece of matte, solid matte paper. So you really don't need to have a window for your matte cut. You just take your painting, you deckle the edges around it, and then you just put that on top of your matte. And it sort of gives it a nice, like, like a scrapbook kind of feel where you have your painting just pasted down on your mat with the edges showing and looks kind of really nice actually. It gives it more of a like, um, kind of, I don't know, more variation and interesting um, things to see when you're looking at the overall painting and framing. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to try to fill up the this picture space with lots of um, subject matter. So I'm going to, let's say I'll make one flower in the center. So I'm just going to do not even just going to do this kind of just like you can see I'm just doing a little bit of a kind of a shape you can't probably can't even see it on camera but I have to do this myself first just to make sure I get everything in place here okay and then up here there's another um, flower shape up here Okay, and then as I develop this, then I'll get a little bit darker and then start to feel around the painting and get a little bit of a, more of a feel. Okay, I'm seeing what I'm kind of developing here. Again, I'm going really light. I'll go over this with a darker pencil line in just a second, so hang on. Don't get worried that I'm not going to go over this in a darker pencil line. I will do that. I just have to get it light first and then see how it looks. And if it looks fine, then I'll go over with the darker pencil line. That's all. And then we have this here, center of the flower. And then under here, we'll do another flower petal shape here. And then we're going to do another. Okay, so now that I have the um, my flower shapes very uh, lightly drawn in, and that's what you can do. You can draw in your flower shape first, your flower petals, the center of your flower, and then from that point, once you get it in real lightly in pencil, you have the opportunity right now, if you want to, to take an eraser and maybe erase a few lines and look look back at your picture and say, okay. You'll work from this. This I'm gonna. You, you can use my painting as your reference once I'm completed with it. So in the beginning of the video, I always show my painting. Please take the very, very first minute or two of my video, do a screen capture of my painting, my finished painting, and use that for your your um your subject matter. Uh, if you don't know how to do a screen capture with your phone or your iPad or your home computer, you can uh, certainly look that up online. There's every type of video imaginable, thousands of videos on YouTube where you just type in maybe like your type of phone. You might have an iPhone, you might have a Samsung phone, you might have another type of phone, another model or brand. All you do is type in the model and brand of your phone or what type of iPad you might have or home computer. And then you just type in how to do a screenshot. And basically it'll just take about five minutes and show you exactly all the steps. And it's not many, just two or three steps to get yourself to take a snapshot of the picture of my first two, you know, the first, in the beginning of my video, again, I show you the finished painting. So all I have to do is do a screenshot or a screen capture of that. And then you can just take that and then save it to your computer, your phone, your iPad. And then from there, you can just put your iPad or your phone across from you and you work from that. So this way you'll be painting exactly what I'm doing here, which is better, even better yet. Uh, copying from photographs is a little more difficult. So if you want to get a really good um, um, insight into painting, let's say watercolor especially, I would try painting from actual finished watercolor paintings versus photographs. I really feel like that's the way to go. 
Some people would definitely argue with it, and that's that's fine too. I want you know I'm happy that people have different ideas and different opinions, but I made a lot of progress when I painted from actual watercolor paintings because I was actually trying to match exactly what I was looking at, which was a watercolor painting. So I was trying to time after time doing little small compositions like this, trying to always match the watercolor painting itself that I was looking at. Now, if I was to go in and try copying photographs like pictures of something, then I'm sort of like, there's a lot of interpretation in there that I might not be able to really understand or know how to, um, you know, do that. So, or, you know, I might not know how to conduct a good representation of what I'm looking at if it's a photograph, but if I'm looking right at a watercolor painting, well then all I have to do is sort of match up the colors, match up the darks and lights, you know, the tonal values, and that's pretty much it, and match up the drawing as best I can. And you can also trace if you need to, and there's all kinds of different methods to tracing. If you're In the beginning, if you're not really um, used to drawing a lot, you know, drawing takes years of practice to get good at. I will definitely attest to that. It, no one, you know, just picks up the pencils and starts drawing and they become a great, you know, master at drawing. It takes years and years and years actually to get really great at drawing. If you want to become great at drawing, you just got to keep working at it and put lots of time into it. But you can get a good handle on drawing five, 10 minutes every day. That'll really improve. It improves your skills a lot. It improves mine a lot. And I still have to practice myself all the time to keep my um, self-learning and growing and, and my drawing skills. But I know I went off on a tangent here, but those few things that I did mention just now, big helpful, you know, hints on the way you can actually take some shortcuts and, and get a little more progress maybe. Perhaps it's, everyone's different too. So you're the artist. You make a, the decision what you want to um, kind of do when it comes to um, taking uh, information in from other people like myself and other artists on YouTube and wherever you might be meeting up with different artists and classes and all these types of things. I always say, you know, sort of like it's a, um, you know, like a menu. If you don't like something someone has on a menu that they're giving you, you know, you just choose what you like and then you do those things. And if you, something doesn't work for you, don't worry about it. You just do something different. But, you know, you're always respectful of everybody when they give you advice because they're just trying to help. And, you know, that's how I always took my education as an artist. Whenever someone was teaching or when I'm looking through books and all these different things, I always just say to myself, I have to make the final decision. I'm the artist. So you're the same way. You're the artist. You're working. Do what works for you, what makes sense for you, and just, you know, and the, and you're you're fine. There's no um, real uh, ego um, trips or, you know, ego battles with different people and who's the best and who's the right, who's right, who's the best. You know, all those kind of things. Don't worry about those things. Just do what makes sense to you. That's what I guess I, I'd like to always say. Try to Try to work what makes, you know, the comfortable things that you like to do. Try doing those things and work on those and... That's what we're doing here. We're just going to develop this really nice flower shape here. So I'll start out again. I'll go right in the middle. I'll start out with a darker pencil line here. I'll even go to a darker lead here. I might use this. This is a um, retractable pencil. And then here, if I can get that darker line, like so, I'm better off. And then I just try to... Try to... Try to get the shapes correct. I'm just going right around the uh, flower shape, the petals. And you can actually, if your first, if your first light sketch comes out really good when you look at it, when you step back, you, you know, then you're fine. You can actually just trace right over the lines which is what I'm doing. I kind of feel like I got that preliminary sketch pretty good. I took my time and now that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure I kind of stick with, with that. I'm just going to, um, I'm going to try to make sure I, like that, that looks pretty good. Then over here, we have this other flower up here. And I'm just going to keep working the shapes that I can see. And 
and things may not always come out exactly perfect the way you're trying to draw things, that's fine. If it looks pretty close to what you're trying to do, then that's fine. Okay, that looks fine. And then we'll do a couple of um, we'll do a couple of stems under here. So we're going to try to do a stem down here like so. That might be curving down this way. Like that. And then there might be a few uh, leaf forms over here. Like that. Just a few more, a couple of leaf forms here, like that. And I think we have a fine looking um, bit of flower shapes here. I think this looks good, and now we're ready to paint. So um, we'll take a quick break once we complete our pencil drawing, and this is like my final contour drawing. So we accomplished two things already, which are really important. First thing is your preliminary sketch, your preliminary drawing, with like a, a maybe like a pencil that, you know, uh, can give you a nice light line, not too dark. And then you can do your first um, drawing, preliminary sketch, and you, then you can erase a few things here and there if you have to make some corrections. If it looks good the first time, then you just leave it. And then you can go right over the top with a darker lead pencil, like a softer lead, like a B, 2B or so. And then you can finish up and you can basically trace over your lines that you did on your first sketch. And that'll give you a darker pencil line. Um, if you like less pencil lines in your paintings, then you can just maybe leave your preliminary sketch and then that's all you have to do. And you don't have to go over with a darker line. I, mo I mostly go over the darker lines though for you. So um, you'll see how, I, uh, how everything looks in the, you know, the final uh, drawing phase. So you can see the dark lines and how I came up with the, the flower shapes. So, okay, we've got the flower uh, completed, flowers, and some of the leaf forms and stems. Now we're good. Now we're going to get ready to paint. So I will be right back in a second or two. I'm just going to get my brushes and um, some clean water and uh, a sponge maybe and some tissues to um, kind of aid in the painting process, and I'll be right back. All right, so our pencil drawing is complete. Let's get started with the painting. I'll probably use a uh, number 10 um, travel brush, a Skoda, Charles Reed series, signature series. And um, we'll get some fresh clean water. And then I'll start to just kind of plan out my colors. Let me see. I'm going to use some cerulean blue, some purple which is ultramarine violet, my favorite purple from Windsor Newton. Cerulean blue. And maybe a little bit of raw sienna. Over here. I think those are three really nice colors we can blend together to get some of the background washes. And then we'll come up here, we'll get some sap green. And maybe some raw sienna, so sap green and raw sienna for some of the greens, like that. Maybe a touch of um, French ultramarine blue for some darker greens, maybe if we want to add a little bit of extra uh, darker tonal value to our greens, we can do that, and then we just maybe add some raw umber to that to warm it up a little bit. But that should be some good colors to start with, some French ultramarine with raw umber, and then some sap green with uh, raw sienna here. And then again, just the ultramarine violet for purple. Our blue would be the um, cerulean blue. And then a little more raw sienna over here. So I think that's a good kind of combination of colors we can start with. We might be able to uh, finish up with that type of a color uh, scheme. I think um, we might add a little bit of orange. Let's kind of just plan out all our colors right away. Why not? 
So then we'll put some orange in over here, that maybe, and some touch of red, some burnt sienna maybe, like this, and we'll use that for the center of the flowers maybe, a little more of a exciting orangey uh, red kind of color. And then let's start to pick up some of our color here. And I'll start in the center of the painting, I think. So I'll just start to get some, a little bit of a medium tonal value started here. And then maybe I'll do a couple splashes just to loosen up a little bit, get some other things happening on the paper so that I don't feel like I'm just kind of working at one small section here and I don't, I'm not making good progress here. If I have a little bit of some splashing, I could kind of feel like I'm making a bit more progress. And then let's, maybe we'll do some stems here. Okay, so we'll get some stems and leaf forms, and maybe uh, we'll get a couple leaf forms in. A little bit of cadmium lemon yellow. I rinse off my brush now. Maybe I think about putting in some shadowing right up in the f flower petals. Like that. So I'm looking for some shadow areas in the petals. And a little bit of blue here, and then maybe some raw sienna. I'll mix in a little more raw sienna over here. couple darks down here, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of green. It's good to get some darks going when we first start. And if you see a couple washes kind of blending too much, maybe you can take a tissue, kind of roll up and, you know, kind of flatten out one edge like this, and then you can do that. Keep working the shadows on the petals here. And there's a large shadow shape up here, so I'll put that in. So 
well as up here. Cool, some cool shadow colors with a little bit of a warm color in there too. And then I try to smooth out those shadows a little bit. And then maybe we'll get our the center of our flower in there. I would start real slow in the middle and let it kind of work its way out. There might be a little bit of a... There's just a bit of um, some damp paper right there in the center of the flower, so... I usually would try to take my time through this area here and not and make sure I don't uh, lose control of the, the wash. Over here it's kind of dry the paper, but over here it's kind of damp still from these washes up here, the, the shadow washes. So I try to be just slow about it. I just try to get this in slow. And that looks pretty good. And if a little bit blends, blends out, that's fine. So you can just see we're just slowly developing the shadows and the, the uh, background colors. Like, so these black background colors here, they're, they're sort of giving us our shapes of our flowers by just painting the background a little bit. And, we don't have to fully develop this uh, painting. We can just kind of rest ourselves and rest assured and say there is background colors in this painting and we're doing a composition here and we don't need to explain everything what the background is and start drawing in other things in the background. We just know that there is a little bit of a darker background and there's these beautiful white petals of these Narcissus flowers, flower shapes. And we just work with that idea. And then we'll start working up in here. I do see a little bit of a dark up here, which is good. We get a good dark in here. There's some leaf forms in there. So that's good. And then there's more leaf forms over here too. So I'll just take my brush and move right on down here, like that. A couple of splashes. And I mix some colors on here. And then maybe I'll go with a little more of that red there. <clears throat> so I'll mix up with the cerulean blue and sap green, raw umber, cerulean blue, and burnt sienna. It's kind of like a toned down green. Okay. 
and we're getting there. I would say let's take a break. We've kind of worked a lot of really beautiful colors in here. And I would leave some white paper here and there. I wouldn't cover every area. I'd let some areas flow into one another, like these shadows here. That kind of looks good, flowing in the shadows with the background. And this way we don't run into that issue where everything is looking cutting out, you know, cut out and pasted on the paper kind of look. As if we cut out some flowers out of a book and then kind of pasted them down onto a background. So let's take a quick break and uh, we'll come right back. We'll let this set up a little bit so these paints will dry. I'm going to take a 5-10 minute break and even 5-10 minutes will really give it a nice bit of time to just sort of, um, you know, the, the washes to dry a little bit and we can keep working and... We're blending ni nicely as we go. You can see all the shadows are blending in nicely into the background. Some areas of the background a little darker tonal values. A couple of the background areas a little bit lighter. And they blend right into the petals of the our flower shapes here. Okay, so let's start back in just about five or ten minutes. We'll let this again dry a little bit and then we'll get started. Okay, so we're really uh, making a lot of progress here. I think we're almost finished. Um, we're going to work on this uh, flower shape up here a little more, some more background, and I think we will be pretty good on this uh, composition. I'll just change out my water. Get some fresh, clean water. And uh, we'll continue here. So we're going to get some more purple. And then some more blue, cerulean blue. And then some raw sienna. Maybe a little bit of orange. Incidentally, you can maybe you can also go with two two water containers. I sometimes notice that I I get fresh clean water and then when I mix out some paint on my palette and then I go to rinse my brush, I take really really clean water and it just goes right to like pretty you know uh, murky looking water. It's not a tremendous problem, but some of you that might find that maybe your water gets really contaminated with a ton of color, you have two choices. You can kind of change your water very frequently. You know, you just dump out your uh, container of water frequently. Or you can, I've seen a lot of artists uh, use two containers. So you would, if you do some mixing on your palette first, then you'd go into your um, pre, um, uh, I guess, the, you know, like a, a first um, water bucket where your the water can be dirty. It can have a lot of muddy paint and water in there. As long as you get the majority of that paint and water off your brush, then you can go into your second container, which will stay a little bit cleaner. So the water is going to stay a little more clear for you. So that's always another option you have when you're uh, working on your palette and pre-mixing things and so forth. So I'm going to go in and get some more, some more purple and some raw, oh, this is a uh, raw sienna. There's some orange here, again, cerulean blue and purple. And so I'll try to get some more shadow over here on this. And I'll just go, I'll paint right over the, into the background with that, with that shadow. Like that. And maybe I'll go in and get some blue, some cerulean blue and purple. Maybe I'll just make a darker bit of uh, color here. And then I'll just maybe take that and
So I just move around a little bit of that wash in the background. And I tap off some water. And I just smooth out that shadow over here. And there's some more shadow over here on this petal. And then we'll go in and we'll get some more of that uh, burnt sienna and a little bit of raw sienna. Okay, and that's a couple of more splashes. And then I'll just do a couple um, a little bit of darker tonal values, a little bit of exciting color here and there. And again, we're just working some of these washes around the petals of the flower shapes. Looks pretty good. And I might just take the um, take the idea of just maybe doing some diagonal uh, little bits of washes, a little bit of diagonal washes like this just a little bit kind of gives the painting a little bit of movement so we have those diagonals just a light bit of wash though not too much and I, I leave lots of white paper but I think this is looking pretty good we can also Put in some more color.
Okay, I think we've had plenty of time to really develop this composition. Some beautiful flowers here, some narcissus, white narcissus. Uh, we have um, plenty of good looking color here. We have, you can always go in if you want, add and add some more um, straight tube paint with no water in a few th spots here and there. Um, that, that can always make things a little more interesting. You can even go in and get a touch of cadmium red. Like that. You add a little tiny bit of cadmium red like that to the rest of the painting. It kind of sparkles and looks really exciting. So you can sometimes add little bits of straight tube paint right out of the palette to um, just make things a little more interesting. And I think the rest kind of just really harmonizes nicely. The blues and the greens and the golds and purple, of course, too, for the shadow colors. And it all kind of harmonizes really nice, the color mixes we have here for this painting. We didn't get uh, involved in too many colors. We kind of kept it pretty basic. And um, I would say this is a completed composition. This is something we can frame if we like to. If you find you did a painting like this and you really enjoyed it, it came out really nice, you can... This this might be a little small for the um, a mat. And again, also, too, you can deckle the edges with a, a deckling a tool. Let me see if I have one. Um, this is uh, called a dual edge ripper, and uh, let's see if I can find something here. So that's called a dual edge ripper, and you can kind of see the deckled edges on these. You can see it's like a uh, sawtooth kind of feel. All you do is you take this and you place it on your paper, and then you just peel your paper. Pe you take this on a, on a table, and you set it down on the table, and then you just peel, you just peel up your, the edge of your paper. And you hold this down real tight, and you peel it up, and you actually can get a really nice deckled edge around this hole. Um, watercolor uh, paper here and then you can just set this on top of a mat maybe like a nice uh, white mat or a cream colored mat maybe a light green or a light blue so you can have fun framing something like this and I've used the uh, the dual edge ripper uh, a lot actually when I frame my paintings so I hope you'll do that too if you find you'll be able to Try a new bit of uh, art supply tools if you think that's something you might like to do. And um, all right, so we're going to um, call it a, a day here. And I hope everyone is really enjoying the the paintings here on my channel. If you haven't subscribed, I always mention if you subscribe on the right hand side below the subscribe button. All that does is keep you in contact with me, so you'll uh, be able to um, find my videos a lot easier if you're subscribed. And you'll see what we're working on each week. And uh, we do everything from flower paintings, boats, seascapes. We do landscapes. You know, we do um, architecture, homes, buildings, city scenes. We do figure painting, portrait painting. So we do everything watercolor. And we try to do a lot of um, different subject matter. So you can kind of try out each one as you go. Even if that's not your favorite Maybe if flowers aren't your favorite, but you can still try them, work on them. It'll build your skills as an artist. So sometimes it's not always fun to paint subjects you might not really be tremendously inter interested in, but still it really does help because it it gives you new insights into the watercolor color medium and helps your uh, skills and uh, your um, you know your artist abilities. So until we uh, get together again for another painting, I wish you well, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.